Chapter 8, The Worst Memory Ever Someone was giving a talk at a youth conference about how much God loves us, but the teenage girl just couldn't believe it. She walked out of the auditorium in tears. A friend of mine and I had the chance to talk to her, and between sobs, she told us of her worst memory ever, a memory that was haunting her and blocking her ability to be open to God's love. Her friend had recently committed suicide, and she was convinced that it was her fault. Her friend had called her one night while she was at church and said, I'm going to kill myself tonight. Do you want to come over and join me? Since she thought that he was kidding, she responded with a sarcastic and joking tone, Shut up and leave me alone. I hate you. And then she hung up on him. Later that night, she was the first one to discover his lifeless body. He had actually done it. He had taken his own life by shooting himself. She quickly realized that her words were perhaps the last words he had heard on earth, and that his phone call had actually been a cry for help. She believed that she could have saved his life, but she didn't. Since that night, she had constantly second-guessed herself as to what she should have said and done. And she was tormented by the memory, not only of what she had said to him from church, but also by the discovery of his lifeless body. She was convinced, deep in her heart, that his death was her fault, that her words and inappropriate response had resulted in his committing suicide. She felt unworthy of God's love, especially when she was at church events, since she had been at a church event when her friend took his life. As we talked, I assured her that it was not her fault, that if people really wanted to take their own life, no one can make them, and no one can stop them. Those words were not enough, though. She had heard them countless times from her friends and counselors, yet she still believed that it was her fault that her good friend was now dead. I want to pause now in the middle of this true story and let you know that I'm one of those people who happen to believe that Jesus is not just some historical figure who used to touch and heal people back in the day when he walked the earth in the flesh. I believe that he still loves to show up and touch and heal his people, people like you and me, and people like this broken-hearted teenage girl. There are countless ways that Jesus can show up in our lives, but the one that I want to share with you right now is absolutely amazing. It can change your life forever as it did for this young woman. It is through a kind of prayer called the healing of memories. My friend and I began to pray with this young woman and it became very clear that Jesus wanted to heal her memories of that night when her friend had committed suicide. And here's how he did it. As we prayed, we took her back into the experience and all of the memories of that night. She actually relived it all. She went back into the room, and she saw her friend's lifeless and bloodied body. And she cried, and she felt all of her original feelings. Then we asked Jesus to come into the scene. We imagined him holding her friend's dead body in his arms and telling her, it's okay now, it wasn't your fault, your friend is with me now. While still being held by Jesus, her friend's eyes opened and he looked at her. Out loud, she asked for his forgiveness and he gave it to her. He stood up, walked over to her and gave her a hug. Jesus joined and it became a group hug as he wrapped both of them in his arms. Jesus then took her friend by the hand and they walked off together. By inviting Jesus into her worst memory ever, this broken-hearted teenage girl finally experienced a peace that she had not felt in a very long time. We all have bad memories because we live in a broken world where we get hurt all the time by other people or just by the stuff of life. Do you have any bad memories from your past of something absolutely awful or extremely painful that happened to you or to someone you love? I know that I have memories like that, like the time that I was in sixth grade and I cried in class because I didn't like my teacher, or like the time that I found out that a friend from college had died in a motorcycle accident. Did you know that Jesus wants to bring healing to those bad memories that you and I have? It's true. He's done it for me, and he can do it for you. Let me tell you how. As I've prayed about that time in sixth grade, I imagine Jesus being with me, with his arms around me telling me that he loves me and that I will be okay. When I prayed about my friend who died in the motorcycle accident, 
I had an image in my mind of Jesus smiling, welcoming her into heaven. These are simple, yet very powerful examples of how Jesus can heal our memories. There are probably skeptics who would say that what happened with the healing of traumatic memories is just wishful thinking or playing make-believe. I disagree with all of my heart. Two Bible passages that provide a sound basis for the healing of memories are Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and Jesus' own words in the book of Revelation, Behold, I make all things new. As people of faith, we believe that Jesus is everywhere all of the time, and since we know that he's always with us, we can also trust that he has always been with us every moment of our lives, especially in our most difficult times. The healing of memories is simply looking at the difficult times of our life with the eyes of faith. If you've ever read the poem Footprints, then you know what I'm talking about. In our toughest times of struggle and pain, God carries us. What happens in the healing of memories is, in fact, more real than what happened the first time because it's allowing God's perspective and God's truth to be infused into our lives. In Christ, there's always a bigger picture. And the healing of memories helps us to see that picture more clearly. It's also kind of like what happens in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, where Aslan refers to a deeper magic from before the dawn of time, a mercy that surpasses human understanding. This deeper magic is God's truth about what happened, and God's love healing what has happened to us. We can trust His love and truth and mercy all of the time, even in the healing of memories. I know someone who lost her husband way too soon in life. When he died, it left her devastated and her children fatherless. She shared with me once that she would often awaken at night, remembering the moment when the doctor said to her, I have some bad news. The pain of a memory like this is beyond my ability to fathom, because I've never experienced a loss quite like that. However, as she shared this with me, I felt compelled to share this idea of God's healing of memories with her. I encourage her to do something very specific anytime she recalls this memory, either in her sleep or while awake, to imagine Jesus standing behind the doctor and adding, after the doctor has spoken, this powerful truth. Yes, but I have some very good news for you. I'm taking your husband to spend eternity with me, to a place where there's no more death, no more pain, and only love. This way of dealing with that memory has brought some healing to this woman's broken heart. As I bring this chapter to a close, I have three more things to share with you about the healing of memories, and they're all very important. First of all, the healing of memories does not take away all of our pain, but it does soften and transform the pain. The woman who lost her husband and the teenage girl who lost her friend to suicide are still in a lot of pain. They both still cry often and grieve deeply, as they should. But they've both realized that the pain is not the end of the story. Their pain is not the final answer, and it never is. The final answer to everything is what God has to say about it, and that is something that we can discover through the healing of memories. Second, keep in mind that for the really big hurts in life, the healing of memories is just the beginning. As you think about your own memories that may need to be healed, ask God what more should you do. Often, we really need to share those most painful times with a trusted parent, youth minister, or counselor, someone who can listen to what we've been through, pray with us, and give us good advice for ongoing healing. Finally, as this chapter comes to an end, I want to ask you a very personal question. What are your worst and most painful memories? Would you be willing to go back to those memories and relive them in order to let Jesus in? As you do, what do you see Jesus doing? What does he have to say to you? After Jesus touches your memory, be sure to share the good news of what he's done with someone that you really trust. And if you want to share the good news with me, you can send me an email through my book's website. Know that I'm praying for you. I'm praying that you might allow Jesus to heal your memories. If this healing of memory stuff intrigues you, check out the appendix called Prayer for the Healing of Memories. It's a great prayer that you can either pray by yourself Have someone pray with you, listen to, or download to your MP3 player or computer.